So there's a story to be told here. This is an interesting evacuation, and I'm just gonna show you a little bit on the graph here. I pulled the system down until it hit about 500 microns. And a lot of times you ask, you know, is hitting 500 microns enough? Well, as soon as you isolate this off, you can see this rapid buildup of vapor pressure. So we went literally in seconds, if we look at this at, at 129, we're at 500 microns. So isolated off at 37 seconds in, eight seconds later, we're at 862. And then we have this slow buildup of vapor pressure over time, right? So that, when we isolated again off, again, that was at 120, let's say 129. And at this point, we, I've waited all the way out here to nine minutes, right? So eight minutes in decay to determine if I'm gonna pass or fail. Well, what happened over that eight minute time was that that vacuum was creating an environment where the bonds of cohesion, water sticking to water, the bonds of adhesion, water sticking to the piping, could break down and that free moisture was just starting to liberate, right? Where it's getting all that moisture out of the piping and dehydration takes time, just like boiling water takes time. And so in this case here, if I knew it wasn't gonna pass my decay test, then all I would do is restart my vacuum pump and allow it to continue pulling down below my target range. Now in this case here, what's also cool is at nine minutes in, I restarted my vacuum pump. So you can see it and that's at 9.07. And at 9.39, so literally 30 seconds later, I shut it off and you can see how much my vapor level in my system dropped, right? So now I'm at a much, much drier vacuum right here, right? I'm at 616 microns and I'm at uh, a decay rate of four microns per minute and I'm at a saturation temp of negative 12. So for a air conditioning system, obviously this is perfect. It's fine, it's dry enough that it's not gonna have any moisture issues, and it's also dry enough that we're not gonna have a little chemical plant going. But the key thing is here, you don't have to wait for the decay test to fail to restart the evacuation and continually dry out the system. And if you do get up to the point where your decay test does fail, then just restart the system, restart the vacuum pump and allow it to pull down a little further. So if I were to pull this down again, we'd see the same thing again, a new level of dryness. And each time we run the pump, it's gonna get drier and drier and drier. So we can allow it to run a little bit longer and just do additional time, or we can allow it to decay and pull it down again. You're gonna end up with pretty much the same results, but the longer we have it on the pump, the better. So even though you can do a really, really fast evacuation, doesn't mean you don't need to give it time for dehydration. And a decay test will show us that. Now, if we were to run nitrogen through the tubing the whole time, we could pull this down and it would flat line out. We'd have a perfectly dry system. In this case, I opened up the valve to atmosphere. We pulled atmospheric air in and the system became sopped with moisture again, just completely wet. So if we're doing good piping practices, your decay tests will not take but a few seconds to pass because it'll pull down and flat line when you isolate the system. In this case here, because it was wet, it pulled down and we see a rise. We see that curve off and that buildup of vapor pressure because the moisture is still liberating from the system. So just some cool things to see in a vacuum. Hopefully you got a little bit out of this. Thanks a lot for watching.